Merry meet. My name is Ariel Gatoga, and I'm so happy to spend some time with you. We have this great conjunction coming up this year at the solstice, winter solstice. So the winter solstice, or Yule, as it's called in many craft traditions, is a very important one. And if you look at it from a more religious point of view, uh, you can look at some of these ancient pagan practices out of which this was, was born. The solstice represents the shortest day of the year. And so that is the birth of the sun god. That is birth, the birth of the sun king. That day is when the, 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 that sun god is a baby. Now, it's important to look back as to where some of these myths came from. Now, remember that a lot of these ancient pagan people believed that the sun came on a chariot every single day. They did not have any clue that the earth revolved around a central sun. They knew that this king, this god, this very important, they knew that it was important, right? Without the sun, they didn't, they couldn't live. They, they thought this king came every single day. And that at the end of that year, when the, 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 the years was, were so short, they were afraid the king was going to die and not come back unless they did something. And so uh, different cultures had different kinds of ceremonies that they would use to encourage that son to be born again each year. And many of these cultures were afraid that if they did not do those things that they did, maybe sacrificing goats or, or people or, or whatever kinds of ceremonies that particular culture had, if they didn't keep doing that, that the sun wouldn't come back. Because nobody wanted to take the chance just to see, well, if we didn't do anything, what would happen? Would it come back? Right? So a lot of our mythology is based on superstition, this superstitious belief that the sun was, a, was some god in the sky that might die if it wasn't for us and our, and our magical practices. Well, having practiced magic for as many years as I have, I also understand that superstition is one of those things that can kill magic. They can kill magic. So we don't want to be superstitious in our magic when we think in terms of what's going on at Yule. We know that the sun's not going to die without our magic, right? I hope you know that, that the sun will not die if, if you don't do a spell or if you don't do a ritual. So we can move beyond our ancestors from that point of view. It's okay. That's not what a, that's not what a magical adept believes. So even though we can borrow some of these rituals and things from our ancestors, we have to understand that we want to be magical adepts. We don't want to be you know, scared pagan people from, from, from cultures way gone by that are afraid that the sun is going to leave us. So instead, what we want to do is look at an esoteric point of view of what that solar return is. When that baby is born... At the beginning of this of this cycle, that baby sun, that is a symbol. It's a magical symbol of the light returning to the earth and returning to our lives. That life-giving light that makes things grow out of the earth, where plants will follow that light of that sun, because that is where the life force is coming into this, into our particular world here in our solar system. Now, on the Kabbalistic tree of life, the sun is number six on that, the sixth sphere on that tree of life. And that sixth sphere represents that which does for us what we cannot do for ourselves, right? We can't create life on our own. We can't do the things that the sun does for us on our own. We, we, we don't have that ability. We are dependent on that sun. So it's an important thing to understand that this new baby that's being born, how it evolved into the Christian Savior is the same for the Christians as it is for any culture. That new baby light is your Savior too because it saves you from hunger because it grows food. 
It saves you from the cold because it brings warmth. It saves you from the dark because it brings light. It saves you every single day. So that salvation, that miraculous sphere on the tree of life is the truth. It is the truth. You are dependent on the sun. You are dependent on the sun, but in a different way than a superstitious way. Now, when we have this big conjunction coming up, this this grand conjunction that's coming up this year, let's see, it's, uh, what is it, Saturn and Jupiter are coming together. They're making a Christmas star. It's the same star that, that the Magi saw in the Bible, in that story in the, in the New Testament. Now, who are the Magi? Well, they are the, the people out of whom the word magic comes. The Magi are the people who developed magic. Magic is their science, the science of those Magi. Magi are not just people in a specific region that happen to show up in that Bible. The Magi represent all magical people, all magical people all across the world from all cultures, from all points of view and, 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 and uh, ways of life. And the Magi represent the adepts of magic. That means that these people are not superstitious like the ancients, many of the ancients were. They see that their magic actually works. Their magic is that which produces results. Now, this year, because the conjunction is so important, it's a very significant time for us because there is more darkness on this planet than there has been in a long, long time. And when I say darkness, I'm talking about social darkness. I'm talking about disease. I'm talking about greed. I'm talking about corruption. I'm talking about all forms of darkness, crime, genocide. It's, it's worse than it's ever been in many ways. And so the fact that this conjunction is happening now is, is a very important symbol because it means to us us the same thing that it means to the Christian religion when they talk about the second coming of Christ. It means the same thing to pagans, because this coming of the sun is so important because it has to come through us. Nothing's going to get dropped onto the earth to save us. That salvation comes through us. That light is being born this year through you. Now, if you are an adept, if you're one of the Magi, you are going to say yes to that so that your craft can be used for the service and for the sake of all humanity in a very special way that's very important just for you, that nobody else can do but you. It's going to look very different from everybody else. It's going to look just like what it needs to look like for you. But you have to dedicate yourself to that. You have to say yes to that light. You have to say, yes, I am willing to be part of that. I am willing for this new son to come into me and use me on its behalf for the betterment of all the world. So that my craft is not just something I'm doing for myself. It's not just so that I can make make my money spell work or my love spell work or that I can dance around a maypole, which and all those things are fine and they can be used. But the bigger picture here is that my craft, my my magic is being used for a higher purpose for the for the healing and dare I say it, the salvation of the entire earth. That way you're becoming, you're being used. You're one of the, you're one of the, 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 the white blood cells in the body of the goddess is how, is how I term that. You're one of the white blood cells used to bring about the healing and the peace that this earth is craving. And it only takes a small bit of light to overcome massive amounts of darkness. And that's what you are. You are the light of the entire world. And it's being born through you and in you. 
and 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 how that manifests for for the betterment of the world is so unique unto you just like your thumbprint is unique unto you nobody can tell you what that's supposed to look like except you and infinite spirit but you have to agree to it you have to say yes nothing comes uninvited the infinite spirit's not going to say, okay, we're going to use you. That would be that, that, that would be enslaved. You'd be enslaved by spirit. Spirit doesn't enslave. So spirit will use you to the degree that you're willing to be used. And to the degree that you're willing to be used by infinite spirit is the degree to which you are successful with your magic and happy on this earth. It's time to start thinking in terms of how can I be of service to spirit? Not how can I be a do-gooder, not, not how can I th- um, do things for people that I think they need. That's not helpful necessarily. But how can I say yes to Spirit's will for me? That's very different. I know all of these things. I know how to do all of these things. So rather than keeping all of these things that are unique unto me, that are my skill set, how about if I offer them up to this light, this coming light? to be used on my behalf, I'm sorry, to be used on its behalf for the betterment of the entire world. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how it's going to be. It's not for me to know. What's for me to know is how to be an adept. I am willing to be trained. I am willing to follow rather than lead. If you want to be a leader in this world, you better learn how to be a follower in the world of spirit because an adept follows An adept follows direction. An adept is always cognizant of their inner guidance. An adept is always learning and seeking and being shown the next indicated step over and over and over again. An adept learns not to think all by themselves. An adept learns always to think from infinite spirit's perspective. Infinite intelligence always guides an adept. So when you say yes to this coming light, you are also saying yes to being trained and and, and showing up to your job every day as as it's shown to you by infinite spirit, as it's indicated by infinite spirit. So whatever your skill set is, it will be used. Whatever you still need to be, still the skills that you still need to have developed, you will develop them. You will be, the, the teachers will be sent to you that need to be sent to you. The, 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 the books, the websites, whatever it is that you need in order to, to do what you're here to do, it will happen. But you have to say yes. And you have to recognize that it is so. No longer are we in an age where it's just about you. Now we're in a new age. That this, this conjunction is the start of this new age. It's here whether we like it or not. And so now our job is to say, well, do I want to be an adept or do I want to be part of the masses? Do I want to be part of the superstitious masses? Or do I want to be an adept and actually make magic work? Now's the time. This has been so wonderful to be with you. I really appreciate you being with me and happy, happy Yule. I know things are looking a little bit weird right now, but I promise they're going to get better. Let's all work together to, to support each other in becoming the adepts that we were born to be. Thank you so much. Much love and many blessings.